Now, usually, I try to make videos that inspire you to travel or chase your dreams, and I'd much rather you watch those. But I do realize that a lot of times, chasing your dreams end up becoming a business. So I thought I'd lend a helping hand or two. Hey guys, all right, so this next ratio is called the long-term debt to total capitalization ratio. And I have a couple of problems with it. You don't have to have these same problems, but at least think through it and try and see where I'm coming from here. So my first number one issue is the fact that it says long-term debt to cap total capitalization ratio. Now, so far for me, it's been very easy for me to explain to you ratios and how to remember them and think about them because everything is in the language used to describe the ratio. So debt to asset ratio, we're looking at everything we have and how much do we owe as a result of everything we have. Whatever the case may be, the story is in the description. But here, capitalization, capital, in finance especially is used in so many different ways the ways that i'm most familiar with that i've seen especially when people talk about cash they will specifically just say the, their cash is their capital right fair enough stay on the balance sheet um i've heard and i've you know it's it's understood as well that you can use capital to mean your long-term investments especially your uh real goods so your land your property, your plants, your equipment. I've, I'm very comfortable and I don't mind people using capital to describe your, their long-term investments. Uh, your equity, I've, I, I, you know, studying finance, I've also come across that a lot of times we will say capital and we actually just mean the equity of a company, the financial claim a company has on every, to everything it has, okay? But here, it's so specific. It says total capitalization. So we're supposed to look at our long-term debt and our total equity. For some reason, we're singling out our long-term debt and compiling it with our total equity. If it was just total equity, I wouldn't mind because it would still follow a certain train of thought, a certain mentality that I'm accustomed to. But when you, this, is, this is basically asking for us to shift to a more unnatural, well, I shouldn't say unnatural, a less familiar description or less familiar use of the word capital okay so just for the sake of cutting no corners we're just going to go over it so long-term debt is something you're going to find on your balance sheet so any amount of money due over a year so let's just make up a number just so we could get this one out the way because I, I I think the next one oh actually another gripe I had um, just because the next ratio we're going to talk about I feel is more natural but if all we're concerned about is our total equity and the relationship our total equity really has because that's what if you look at this and actually think intuitively what is this asking what is this trying to find out what you're really just concerned with is uh, all the money that the company owns and all the money that it's going to that it owes after a year right why are we adding long-term debt again to the bottom to our denominator I just it's just one of those really strange well, it's strange to me, okay? But for you, it can be very easy. Maybe you're trying to think about it right now, staring at the formula, and you get why this is um, a valuable formula. So long-term debt to total capitalization ratio, which is our long-term debt, all the money we owe after a year, that's due. Well, all the money where we, which we have to be concerned with paying off after a year, I should say, long-term debt, overall long-term debt, again, that same amount plus our total equity. So retained earnings, uh, preferred stock, uh, common stock, all that stuff. All right, so let's just take a look at a fancy example. We'll say our long-term debt is equal to $100,000. And I'm sorry if I'm not very excited to explain this one, but I do just wanna at least get it out the way. All right, so long-term, um, our long-term debt, our long-term liability is $100,000 and our total equity, Especially when you start writing it out, it sort of irritates you a little bit. Why am I adding the long-term debt to my total equity for my denominator? It's just, it doesn't add to any line of thinking, at least not like the next ratio is going to. But well, we just have to go through it. It exists, so we must do it some justice. So let's say total equity, we have $50,000. All right, what would the calculation be? Again, for sake of being overly repetitive, long-term debt over long-term debt plus total equity. I feel like I should have emphasized certain words just to make it sound more ridiculous, but I don't want to be judgmental, especially over something that's not even real. All right, um, 100,000 plus 50,000. And I really feel like this just hinges on your 
understanding of the word capital. And again, mark when we when we start talking about market capitalization, you may start to realize that there's so many ways of looking at capital. Why are we forcing long term debt into the conversation? Why are we saying long term debt plus total equities are total capitalization? I mean, that's that's not all right. It is it is what it is. But just keep in mind market capitalization um, and every other basic every other um, way of understanding capital as i've already explained and you'll see that this is just one of those why are we doing this okay so i'm just going to go through the math in case you have an exam or something it's 150. all right so all right we're going to cancel all the zeros so four of them this is really equal to two over three point six six and two to three because I like to keep things in ratio form for you and I to have conversations. So yeah, guys, this is it. Long-term debt to total capitalization for every total cap of $3 um, that we, how do I even describe this? That we own slash owe after a year, we owe $2 after a year, right? I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not very excited, but this is the formula and um, this is this is how you calculate it. You just take all your long term debt, put it on top, then you divide it by your long term debt again, um, plus your total equity, which you will be able to find on your balance sheet. And then you calculate and you will get some numbers and hopefully you're able to pass your exam because that's probably the only place they're really going to come up a lot. At least this this comp computation. And if you're in an industry that actually uses this a lot, good for you. Good for you because you are way smarter than I am. Thank you so much for watching. Turning a dream into a reality usually ends up becoming your business. That is why we have the Help Enhance videos. Subscribe, like, and feel free to leave a comment below. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Fans of Kindness, our Facebook page, is also waiting for you. See you in the next video. Until then, be your best and never stop learning.